Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Now, a lot of talk at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, about ESG, sustainability, what's going on, what's happening in the mining sector. So I thought one of the companies that's doing a lot in this space is Blackstone, Blackstone Minerals, and their ASX code is BSX. And I've asked Anna Craney to come on, and I hope I speak. I didn't pronounce that right, but never mind. No, you didn't. That's fine. That's oh. fine, Carrie. <laughs> Do you know what? I asked before and I knew I'd get it wrong. Anyway, Anna, Anna's here. Uh, she's the leader of their social performance group at Blackstone, doing a lot of work in that ESG and sustainability space. So, Anna, welcome to Small Caps. Thanks for joining me today because it's a big space and I want to understand a little bit more and understand what Blackstone is doing and I guess why. So yeah, great. we lead off with why Blackstone are getting into this space and was it important when what your role is, what you're doing? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me, Kerry. So um, uh, we're, we've just released our sustainability report. It's our inaugural report. Um, and it is a little bit unusual to release it at this point for us, given that um, we're not in production. Um, we're starting construction of our pilot plant next year and then looking to our refinery following that. Um, but we felt that um, our product and our story um, is really um, centred around um, good governance, good social performance and environmental compliance. And so we need to start from a base even before all of that um, production and uh, construction has started um, and share our ESG position, our story and what the priorities are. So Really, that's the intent of, of this report, um, to make that clear to our shareholders and also to our employees, because they need to own that story as much as our, our shareholders who are concerned about those issues too. Uh, it, it's interesting. Is there a, a, a concern by the majority of shareholders? I mean, I'm going to ask you the tough question. Are you paying lip service because it's just what everybody's talking about at the moment? Or... Do you feel that this is a really important part of any mining company going forward? Yeah, so I think um, any mining company, in fact, any company needs to be thinking about what their contributions are to the communities that they're operating in, as well as um, the impact that they're having on the environment. Um, we see that now just in the responses and the questions we get from our shareholders, the expectations that they have and the literacy level they have around good environmental performance, what does um, working in your community um, look like when it's done well and what it, what are the, what's the community raising in terms of issues or concerns or questions. So they will be, they'll ask very pointed questions around that and it's part of my job, the, the part of my job I love the most um, right. is being challenged on those things because, um, you know, the Blackstone story, not sure if your viewers are aware of it, but it was um, previously a nickel mine that was mothballed for some time and then um, purchased by the Blackstone team in 2019. Right. Um, we've we've been operating in that community then. That the mine has been operating in that community for some time in northwest Vietnam, um, and with that comes expectations um, from the community around what we will deliver and and um, the legacy that they expect us to leave. Uh, and are the Vietnamese quite? Um aware of what what's the sustainability i mean are they are they the ones driving this or is blackstone driving it yeah good question i think they are um and and if you think about you know where you live yourself sorry there's oh, i who's actually have that in the background is that a baby uh, or? <laughs> no it's actually a dingo so ah, we've got we've got it. we've got the office dog uh in in the office with me she normally likes being with me but um she's a little bit restless at the moment <laughs> esg gets really excited as you can tell there so. you go. the dingo is excited about esg i love it <laughs> all right so what's her before we keep going what's her name uh mini yeah mini yeah be quiet <laughs> yeah <laughs> She's all right. It sounds like it looks like she's listened actually. So, um, so um, the question was the about the community. Was it Blackstone driving it, or do you think it was the community? Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been really impressed by um, how well the community can advocate for themselves. And and if you think if you take yourself and and your own expectations around 
any major development that might be occurring close to your home, you take an active interest, you try and advocate as much as possible uh, and make sure that your rights are being heard and and that you will have opportunities, um, you may have opportunities around that development or that project. And in the same way, um, the community and the commune that we're operating in, um, they're really, um, I guess, literate in the sense that they know what they don't want and they know what they want from this project. And and they're really excited, genuinely, I'm not paying lip service to that, excited about the mine starting. Scott um, Williamson, our MD, has shared a story around the day after the mine was bought, um, there were workers arriving at the gate who had previously been engaged on the previous past project. They turned up in their PPA and were ready to start work. Wow. Um, so, you know, that speaks to the legacy that was left and, and I guess the expectations of that community in terms of um, employment, career pathways and the economic opportunities that we can provide. But similarly, um, you know, they're very clear on the fact that um, they don't want pollution in their waterways um they want to um you know have minimal noise just disturbances and disruption um and um that that it's going to be a safe working environment for everyone that clocks in and out um at the front gate and those are all part of what you're doing to ensure that that all all gets delivered that all falls under that esg banner does it yeah, but, but, you know, really for ESG to be effective, it shouldn't be someone just like me. It needs to be the whole team that owns it and very passionate about that. I, I should be able to just step to the side and I am stepping to the side. I'm going on maternity leave in a couple of months. Um, so, you, you know, the health of, of um, good ESG in a mining company is when um, people can um, share responsibilities as much as possible um, and and make sure that it's owned by the different functions, whether that be the engineers, the geologists, procurement team, um, finance, HR. They all need to have a hand in ESG for it to be meaningful. Otherwise, it is, as you say, just lip service. It's, it's lip three service. three word three letters. Yeah. Um, Anna, why do you think? Uh, because it, it appears to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, it appears to me that the ESG. Um, I guess values, whatever you want to put it, that, that, that those three letters, as you say, have suddenly become part of everyone's vocab just in the recent probably 12 months or so. Why now do you think it's become so important and is becoming, I guess, more making more people aware? Why now? Yeah, so I'd say um, there's, there's really, uh, there's a few drivers. Um, so the first is um, recent incidents um, that I don't need to go into, but, but um, everyone's well aware of in Australia and overseas in terms of tailings and heritage protection. People have expectations now. They're, they're far more, um, they expect to be um, far more informed about the way that a mining company might operate in a community. Um, and so bundled up, you know, ESG is a, is a good way of bundling up some of those expectations uh, in terms of permitting, um, community relations um, and safety around tailings. Um, in addition to that, um, we're seeing, um, you know, increased concerns around uh, the environment and um, the impacts that climate change might be having on certain communities. So, um people often want to know what a company's position is on that or how their product is um, resolving some of those things, some of those issues. And that's what I'm really passionate about is this, the product we're developing, yep. um, NCM 811 Precursor, going into cathodes, then going into elect, can go into electric vehicles. And um, at the end of that supply chain are consumers and, and car manufacturers that are driven um, by transparency, they're driven to understand how is that produced um, and, and what are the impacts of that product that's going into the car, yeah, for example. It's, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because do you think it's going to allow, I guess, because the mining industry, let's face it, the mining industry for a long time has had a bit of a bad rap uh, with mm -hmm. people not understanding that actually nickel goes into an electric vehicle. Do you think this focus on ESG and sustainability will allow those that don't understand it to go, oh, okay, they are being, in other words, it will give a better understanding of mining and its responsibilities. 
I think mining has been doing ESG for a really long time, um, but they haven't been packaging it well. And don't don't get me wrong, I think there's definitely room for improvement. There always is, and there is for us at Blackstone. Um, but but I think um, you know the the products and the materials that are coming out of mining the mining industry now have increased focus to a, a much broader audience and um you know that's a role for someone like me to convince those non-believers that mining is actually it's completely essential and um and it can be done in a responsible way um you know i've been personally challenged on how can you be working in mining as i was previously working in oil and gas and um you know there's an education piece there that needs to happen on both sides um And, and a sustainability report goes some way to doing that to the broader public, um, but there's there's certainly other um, methods and tools um, and conversations that need to happen as well. Yeah, very well said. And I think it's, uh, I, I think actually now I'm, I'm putting it through in my head going, actually, this is going to be really good for the industry because it's that transparency and that understanding that actually we're not in there to, to kill off communities. We're actually potentially doing really good things with communities. Mm. Um, Looking to the investment side of things, how do you see how investors can use these sustainable, this is your inaugural sustainability report. Mm. Um, How can investors use those reports to, I guess, guide their due diligence when it comes to ESG? Yeah, so if if I was an investor and I'm an investor myself, I do look at um, other companies' reports and and try and understand if there's one that exists in the first place um, before I make a decision um, around um, investing my own money into into those companies. The second thing I'd be, you know, I'm naturally sceptical. So so when I read the sustainability report, um, I look past some of the glossy photos and, and, and really... Um, try to consider well is there are there certain disclosures um, that they're providing or what are the metrics that they're providing how robust does the data look um, in terms of um, their health and safety performance um, uh, you know their waste um, or or what sort of employment figures are actually generated in that local community versus number of expats coming in um, if it's an international operation for example the other thing I'm really interested in is um, the governance piece. So is there robust, strong governance at the corporate level um, that creates, I guess, a, a steadiness in that company um, where, you know, if there's an issue later that it can be responded to quickly or anticipated and then mitigated um, mm. So as an investor myself, they're the types of things that I look for. Also look for um, companies that have partnerships with reputable um, other companies or um, not-for-profit organisations or agencies. So, um, for example, um, the United Nations Global Compact um, is a fantastic network in Australia you need to apply to to um, join and they provide guidance around um, good governance, anti-bribery and corruption, um, you know, how to how to bring benefit um, to communities um, against the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So all of those pieces of the puzzle, um, if you're savvy in, in what you're reading, you'd be looking for those sorts of things to understand, well, how seriously is this company taking it or is it lip service yeah okay so that's why the reports are very interesting and important for people to look at those frameworks and those metrics around what they're doing um Mm. we mentioned earlier that you're not in production yet at blackstone (laughs) but you've published a report is that a little early why why publish a report now why 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 now yeah, so so I guess for us, um, we're we're often promoting our product um, as a green nickel product, and and yes. the way that we def- the way that we define that is um, our corporate commitment to ESG through transparency and things like the sustainability report, um, and all of the initiatives that I mentioned around employment and and. Um, you know, other career pathways and capacity de- development of local communities. Um, 
But the other thing that I guess really informs that definition is the fact that we're located um, between um, two major hydropower plants in northwest Vietnam. So we can um, use renewable energy to, to run our operations uh, and electrify um, most of what we do there. So for us to be able to say that with some credibility, um, we figured that we need to publish a report this year um, so, and to start a baseline. So, the, you know, this is the 2020 report. It's, it's backward looking, um, but we're going to release the 2021 report soon, early next year, um, and, and really keep that momentum going um, and, and um, meet some of the expectations of our shareholders around um, continued transparency for that. Speaking of continued transparency, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, you announced a collaboration or a partnership, I guess, with Circular, which is a UK mm -hmm. company. And I was interested to know a little bit more about that and why that's important. And, and that, from my understanding, is all along that transparency. And I guess using blockchain to say, look, this, this ton of dirt came from here and it's, it's all not using hard labour, if you like, or whatever. Can you just explain why that partnership, why now, and what that delivers for Blackstone and for the share? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So so um, really Circular's work um, in this space um, is around um, providing solution technology solutions for a company like Blackstone to show, um, to track that whole um, chain of, of custody or um, every point of our process and what the impact is. So um, per tonne of nickel, truckload of nickel, per bag of nickel, whatever sort of measurement or form um, we use. So, um, so by using blockchain, that, that um, data around um, water impact, biodiversity impact, um, uh, carbon emissions per kilo or per ton, we can prove in real time because it's one thing to share that data in a sustainability report that's released annually, but for that really that deeper level of transparency, you need to be doing that regularly and um, and to be able to, to prove that you know, almost immediately to to car manufacturers, for example. Yeah. So, um, and then ultimately the customer who's who's driving the OEMs to um, to take a real interest in it. So um, we we see that as really important. You know, one of our values is transparency, and um, and we see that a sustainability report is great. Um, at one point in the year when people can go to it, read up, as I just talked about my own um, experience, read up on everything that's supplied. But this really gives you nowhere to hide this, this, this blockchain technology. Yeah. And that's where, tech, and, and, you know, I find the blo whole blockchain technology, it is fascinating. And it's, I guess it's going to out those that are not doing the right thing and bring to the forefront those that are doing the right thing. As a result, I guess Blackstone, like the car manufacturers will be looking for companies like you that are using this sort of technology because they can tick the box and say, hey, listen, it's it's well positioned, this particular company, and here we can track it from right from the start. Yeah, so that's right. We, you know, there's an element of we're not in production yet, but we're anticipating this to be us. So, so we've, um, you know, joined with Circular in this partnership because we know that it's coming. We see that it's coming. Um uh, Tesla, Volkswagen, they're, they're really clear on where, um, where their expectations are for mines and, and um, raw materials globally. And that is around um, uh, doing good due diligence on their supply chain and making sure that um, the levels of environmental compliance are reached or, or exceeded and um, that workers aren't being subjected to forced labour and um, what we would term now modern slavery. So um, we're just trying to get ahead of the curve, basically, and, and anticipate um, and, and be able to produce um, this snapshot of this um, NCM precursor straight away as soon as we're asked. So, yeah. Anna, do you, do you think, do you see Blackstone leading the way in terms of some of this using the technology and being this transparent? Are you guys leading the way? 
I'd say we are. For a company of our size, we are. Um, and look, we're going to learn things along the way and make mistakes, no doubt about it. Um, no one's squeaky clean. Um, we, you know, we know that there's things that we need to address and those things are highlighted in our sustainability report. We want to be as transparent as possible with our shareholders to say these are what we know to be the risks um, and, and these are, importantly, these are what we've committed to address them. So, um, you know, th there are other companies that I really admire and respect that are doing similar work, um, but for, a, for an emerging company like ours, I'm really proud to... Um, be working with our team and and um, developing some of these projects and programs well as you said earlier it comes from the top as well so um you know i guess you know we have to acknowledge the fact that scott williamson actually was the one that started to drive this and said this is the way we're going to be we're going to be a green mining company and we're going to start to use renewables so congratulations on that we're running out of time anna it's been absolutely delightful now first of all before I get into my sign off, which is the three reasons, um, where can people find this sustainability report? Is it on your website or do they need to send an email yeah. to find it? No, on our website. Um, and um, they can also see it on the ASX announcement too. Okay, brilliant. Yep. Now, I want to know three re we've talked all about ESG, we've talked about sustainability. Uh, it's an investor audience. Why do you give me three reasons or give us, I should say, three reasons? why you think this is important to, uh, I guess, Blackstone investors and, and shareholders right now? Yep. So first one's Black, Blackstone. We want to lead the way in ESG innovation and, and, um, and good business. Um, and this is the first step on that journey. Um, I'd say uh, second one is you can't run from these expectations. This level of transparency is coming for every company. Um, and the scale and speed of that, you, you just have to look at, um, at, at where um, the, the amount of capital that's now available for ESG compliant um, projects and companies. Yep. And, and I guess the third one is that we know we're going to be creating a premium product and, and with that, you know, a premium green product. And with that, we know um, will come premium price. So oh. um Music to the shareholders' ears, premium I bet. price. <laughs> um, well, that's and that's and that's a good thing. So um, there, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Three reasons why the ESG sustainability report from Blackstone Minerals, which was um, published this week, is important. Go and check it out on their website. Um, Mini, wherever you are, thank you for behaving slightly. A little bit of a whinge there in the background, but I think it's because she got excited about ESG. Uh, yeah, she's, Anna, she's calm now. Yeah, it's fine. She's calm. I thought, thought it would be quiet. Yeah. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. We wish you all the best, not only for your leadership in the ESG, but also for your upcoming birth of your little one. Thank you. Thanks very much. Two months to go. So two months more of um, pregnancy brain at Blackstone, I think. So hopefully <laughs> the team is patient with me. Well, well done and congratulations. And we thank look you. forward to more news out of Blackstone in the near future. Cheers, Anna. Thanks, Kerry.